Hi everybody, it's me, stand-up comedian Sean Deals, and welcome to the debut episode of Fantasy Universe Wrestling. This is our, again, our debut episode, I'm really excited. So this show, so on this show I will be reviewing, some weeks I'll be uh, reviewing all the wrestling shows, and some weeks... I will be doing a fantasy promotion with all the greatest wrestlers of all time and how I would book it if, uh, if it was like the best of the old, best of the new, all kind of mixed into, uh, into one promotion in their prime. And uh, this week I'll be doing reviews. I have, uh, I have four reviews this week. I have Raw, NXT, NWA, Power, and Survivor Series. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch SmackDown because I watch most of my wrestling through Hulu. And the SmackDown Hulu doesn't drop until very late. I work night shift, so I can't watch Raw and SmackDown and NXT. Uh, I can't watch them live because I work nights. So I had to watch the rewinds on Hulu. And the SmackDown Hulu takes forever to drop. And... Uh, so it just never really dropped in time for me to watch SmackDown, so I just had to look up the results. But I did get to watch Raw, NXT, NWA Power, and Survivor Series. So, uh, so I'm gonna review those four. So a little bit about me: I'm stand-up comedian Sean Dills. Um, I have five loves in my life: wrestling, Batman, Scooby Doo, horror movies, and my girlfriend Tasia. And just in case Taze is listening, that was in no particular order. Uh, they're all equal in my eyes. Wink, wink. Um, so, I've watched wrestling basically my whole life. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I'd watched a lot of the Attitude Era. I like to, well, I, when I say watched, I like to play action wrestling figures while I watched wrestling. Uh, back in the day, my favorite wrestler was Kane. Which is really awesome because now Kane is my mayor because I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I actually voted for Kane to be my mayor. Which is so fucking cool, right? Your favorite wrestler as a kid is your fucking mayor. How cool is that? Um, also, I kind of stopped a little bit. Like, I watched from the Attitude Era, probably from, like, the Stone Cold heyday to the early Ruthless Aggression area. And I kind of, like, I guess I fell off a little bit. Uh, and then I... I'd watch a little bit and then like I jump back into it a little bit when DX reunited and they were going up against Shane and uh, Vince again back in like I think it was like 2006 2009 maybe uh, when they were fighting Spirit Squad and I kind of fell off again but then uh, even though I didn't really watch a whole lot we'd still kind of watch the Royal Rumbles and Wrestlemania and then I remember watching the 2011 Royal Rumble and when Booker T came out, I popped so big. And something happened. When Booker T came out, something happened to me. And I got goosebumps. And I was like, yeah, this this isn't going to be a watch two pay-per-views a year kind of thing. I'm, I'm back into wrestling for good. And after watching the World Rumble 2011, I didn't miss a pay-per-view for another four or five years. Didn't miss a Raw or a SmackDown for four or five years. You know, and since then, yes, I have missed, you know, quite a few episodes. Like like I just said, I just missed SmackDown this week. So, you know, I'm okay if I miss the episode here or there. Um, NXT, uh, I, 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 when it, as soon as the WWE Network started, I jumped on the NXT. I've been hit or miss on it. I watched it for years, uh, but I kind of stopped a while back back but recently probably the last three or four months i jumped back on the nxt so when you hear me review nxt i've i kind i know where it's still, the stories are but there's still some people i'm getting used to uh and when and also i'll be reviewing nwa power i've only watched this is my second week watching nwa power so there's a lot of these guys i don't know so i'm still adjusting to that but uh yeah all right, let's go ahead and dive in. You guys know a little bit about me. Let's, let's go ahead and dive into a Raw review. This was Raw, November 21st. Uh, it starts out with Drew coming out after he interfered in Cody and Jay's tag match. 
uh, Drew comes out, does a promo, uh, saying, you know, hey, I did help Judgment Day, but I'm not part of Judgment Day. Uh, I was really, I kind of hope eventually he does become part of Judgment Day. I think him and Rhea would be great co-leaders. I think they'll kick, uh, they'll kick Damian Priest out. Now, today is, uh, November 27th. Uh, Raw does come on tonight. I haven't watched it yet. So if that happens tonight, you know, I haven't seen it. So I, hopefully that does happen. I kind of hope they kick Damian Priest out and then put Drew in and then Drew and Rhea become the leaders of Judgment Day. And I think that would be really cool because I think Dominic would get jealous of Drew McIntyre. That would be kind of a, a little cool side story they can do. Also, I love this promo. Drew killed it. It's probably one of my, his best promos. Next up was Nia Jax versus Raquel Rodriguez. <clears throat> I didn't get to watch this match because Hulu cut it off. And uh, I kind of hope... I kind of wish all the stream would just go to Peacock. And they do it, you know, immediately after it comes out. Because Hulu cut shit out and I don't know why. It pisses me off. Uh, it's not like I really care about this rivalry. But I didn't get to see it and I kind of wish I did. I did get to see uh, Becky Lynch versus Xia Lee. I don't care about this feud either. Xia Lee was like losing every match for a while, and then she just disappeared for months and months and months. We really didn't see her until recently. Uh, and uh, I, like a, f- a few months ago, I think they did kind of tease her joining Damage Control, but nothing came out of it. Uh, it's just hard to see a background character all of a sudden be like fighting Becky Lynch. You know, she was just basically in catering for all these months i i don't know i just i don't i don't know it's just it came from nowhere and becky won uh but i do i do want to see more of exactly i think they just need to build her character before just saying hell like all of a sudden she's just this ultimate badass uh so yeah i think she should stay on nxt and then they could build her up as a character and then move her up as you know as a top contender. Next up is Johnny Gargano versus Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Kaiser. Also, Hulu cut this one off. Uh, anything Johnny Gargano does, Hulu hates because I never see Johnny Gargano. Uh, but I do love both these guys. I would love to see these guys in the next three years be top talents. Uh, I I think both of these guys are just great in the ring. Uh, Johnny wins this match, is from what I read, and I really wish I got to see it. Fuck you, Hulu, for cutting that off. Okay, so next up we have a Tegan. It was a big women's tag match to see who the number one contender is. Uh, it was Tegan Knox and Natalia versus Caden Carter, K- Katana Chance. I, I don't like their names. Uh, they also fought Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae, who, and also they fought Maxine Tupri and Ivy. Uh, I love this match. I thought Ivy and Maxine made a good team. Uh, much better than Natalia and Tegan Knox are. N- Natalia and Tegan Knox have no chemistry. I don't know why they threw them together. I feel bad for Natalia because she's just kind of thrown where she's needed. Uh, even though I don't love Natalia and uh, uh, I do love Piper and Evan and Chelsea Green as champs. They uh, they took a cursed title and they're making this a lot of fun. I have anytime. Piper and Chelsea are on screen. It is so much fun. I hope they're champions for a long, long time. In fact, I think they should stay champions because eventually Sonya Deville is going to come back and technically she never lost a title. I would love to see what they do with that. I think that would be a lot of fucking fun. Uh, Tegan and Natalia won. And uh, again, they those girls have no chemistry. I wish they would have gave it to somebody else. And I have high uh, high uh, high hopes for Maxine Dupree and Ivy. They actually were a lot of fun in this match. And uh, yeah, I like to see where this goes. Next up, uh, Miz and Gunther have a showdown with uh, you know basically they've been having the same promo against each other for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Miss does get the upper hand on Guther on this one. Hits him with the skull crushing finale. Uh, I'll go more deep into this one when we do Survivor Series. All right. Next up was Chad, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Chad Gable. Uh, I think this one got cut too from Hulu, uh, but I don't know. This match is two guys who deserve much better, you know. But someone always has to win, so. 
I would rather see Chad Gable win, but that's okay. Uh, he, Chad Gable keeps proving and proving himself over and over again. He needs a big victory, and like you know, why have Shinsuke win? Because he had his chance twice to win the world heavyweight title, and they made him lose twice. So what is their plans for Shinsuke Nakamura? Like, basically, he's only been getting like. He's being beaten up the jobbers. Like, he's the king of the jobbers. He beats jobbers all the time, but that's all he does. He doesn't really do much. What I would do is have Shinsuke go to NXT and fight Dragon off. Have him win, actually. That would be great because Raw, all he does is beat jobbers. And uh, I don't see what they're going to do with him on the future on Raw. There's, I can't, just, what could he do? He got beat by uh, Seth Rollins twice. There's nothing for him left on Raw. Unless he, unless Gunther turn or yeah, Gunther turns face and he beats Gunther for the title, that's I doubt it because Gunther is so good as a heel. So that they just there's nothing for him on Raw. Uh, Shinsuke did win this match, so yeah, nothing's going to come from that. In the main event, it was Drew versus Jey Uso for the advantage at the War Games. Drew won. Uh, how long can Drew hold his anger, though? Because he's mad at Jay because it was a bloodline who ruined his uh, chance at the universe, the WWE, WWE Universal Heavyweight, whatever the hell they call that title. Uh, I guess we'll just call it the WWE Championship. He, the bloodline ruined his match at uh, Clash of the Castle. But technically, I don't even think the Usos were there. One, I thought it was just uh, Solo. I don't, I don't understand why he's, he's he's already cost Jay his tag team rematch. He's now beaten Jay Uso in one on one, and he's still mad at Jay Uso. Like if you're that mad, why don't you just go to SmackDown fight Roman and uh, Solo? I know there's the he's technically on Raw, but Cody Rhodes just went there the other day to help out LA Knight. So you can't say they just can't cross anyway because they do it all the time. And then at the end of Raw. Cody announces it'll be Randy Orton joining them in the War Games on the face team. So it'll be uh, Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, Jey Uso, and Randy Orton versus Dominic Mysterio, Drew McIntyre, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and J.D. McDonough. Alright, so NXT. First up we had uh, Noam Dar versus Chad Gable. My boy Chad Gable on another match. This time for the Heritage Cup. <clears throat> like I said earlier... I'm kind of a few months into NXT. I wasn't there at the beginning of the Heritage Cup. I don't know what the fuck the point is. I don't know what it's about. Uh, I do enjoy the Heritage Cup match where they have the rounds, but I I don't know what the Heritage Cup is supposed to be. So, but I do. Uh, I I did want Chad to be able to win. Uh, he did not. He did. He didn't. Uh, I guess he didn't win and lose. The match was a draw. Uh, so it was kind of nice. He he didn't lose this match, but he didn't win either. But I'm hoping that Chad Gable and Noam Dar have a rematch at NXT Deadline. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Noam Dar, but I do think he's growing on me because I love his Power Rangers, Powerpuff Girl type of entrance he has going. Um... So yeah, I'd like to see Chad Gable and Noam Dar at Deadline. That would be a lot of fun. This match was great, so I know they'll have a fantastic match at Deadline. Okay, next up we have a tag match. Angela Garza, Humberto Carlillo versus Malik Blade and Idris Enofi. Okay, I don't know how to see any of these motherfuckers' names. Also, Hulu cut this match out too, so I didn't get to see it. Uh, I would have liked to see it because I've never seen Angel and Humberto really win a fucking match before. Uh, kind of lame they cut this out. But I do hope they do become NXT Tag Team Champions soon because I like them a lot. Uh, next up, they have, they've they been doing this thing where like legends get to pick out the contenders for the coming up Iron Man match for the number one contender. Uh, so JBL's first picks, he picked out Carmelo Hayes versus Josh Briggs. And uh, they made Josh Briggs look like a goddamn star in this match. He looked like a million bucks. Uh, Lexus, Lexus King came out and distracted Carmelo Hayes, causing uh, Josh to win, which I was kind of surprised, but it's kind of cool. Um, 
I have high hopes for Alexis King. I actually listened to his interview on uh, Booker T's podcast, the Hall of Fame, and oh my God, Alexis King, uh, who's actually uh, Brian Pillman Jr. His story is like is so crazy. Uh, I like Brian Pillman Jr. Or I like Brian Pillman a lot, and I really hope Brian Pillman Jr. Alexis King does great in WWE. Uh, so I, what my what I think is going to happen is uh, I think Trick Williams is going to win the Iron Man match at Deadline. I think Carmelo and uh, Lexus King are going to have a match at Deadline with Carmelo beating Lexus. And when Trick and Dragunov have their match, I think Car uh, Carmelo Hayes will screw Trick Williams over. And I think it'll be Trick versus Carmelo at the uh, whatever pay-per-view they have with Wrestlemania, I think it'll be Trick versus Carmelo Hayes. And I'll be good as Booker T would say. I don't think I said it as good as Booker T. Anyway, so that's my uh, theory on what's going to happen in the future of that. Uh, JBL's other pick was Davenport, Blair Davenport versus Thea Hale. Um, so when I started watching NXT, Thea Hale I could not stand I don't, I don't know why. I think it was just how over exaggerated she was. She'd just scream, and her eyes would be crossed. I couldn't stand her. I still don't really like her that much at all. Uh, my my disdain for her has lessened a lot because when she came out, I was always annoyed. Now I now I could tolerate her. So hopefully, I'm hoping the next year or two, I'll start to like her Thea Hell more. Uh, but not today. And I was really happy, happy Blair. Blair Davenport won that match. Sorry, Thea. Uh, Eddie Thorpe defeated Charlie Dempsey, which was cut out of Hulu as well. Um, you know, a lot to say on that. I'd really like to see Charlie Dempsey. I'm a big William Regal fan, so I'd like to see his son wrestle more. I haven't got to see a whole lot of him because all his, either his shit's getting cut out or he's fighting on NXT Level Up. So maybe I need to start watching that to see more of him. Um, also, they had a NXT Tag Champs, Tony D'Angelo and Channing Lorenzo. They had a big, like, Italian Thanksgiving dinner. And, like, the weird thing was, after the dinner was over, they left. And it turns out the Thanksgiving dinner was at the Full Sail venue. Why the fuck was their Thanksgiving dinner at the Full Sail venue? That's weird. And when they left, they got jumped by Angela Garza and Humberto. Uh, again, I'd really like to see them beat them for the NXT tag titles. I don't like the Don and his nephew or buddy or whatever he is. Uh, I wasn't, when it's, cause when I jumped to NXT, I didn't see the beginning of Tony D'Angelo's story. Uh, so, but I don't know. I just, from what I've seen, I don't get it. I don't like him. My best friend loves the guy and, uh, loves the tag team. It's just not for me. I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's goofy as fuck. Which is weird because I'm like a big Dan Housen Santino fan, but just these guys don't do it for me. Uh, maybe one day, but just not today. And I kind of hope they lose the titles at deadline. Uh, so finally, our main event we had Lyra Valkyria versus Xia Lee. Uh, this is more Xia Lee's pace. I, I this one I could see more of a real match than her and Becky. Uh, they uh, I like this match. Lyra won. I want to see. See, I want to see more of Xia Li here on NXT. This is where she belongs right now. Uh, if they keep up the pace of her, the way they've been booking her the last like two, three weeks exclusively, I could see her being really good and being you know NXT Women's Champion one day. Just get her off Raw, stick her on NXT exclusively. Do more of what they did with her the previous week, where she had the sit down tea thing with uh, Lyra. That was a lot of fun, and I kind of kind of start to uh, like Xia when I saw that. So they need to do more of that. That'd be great. All right, let's move on. Uh, next up, we have NWA Power. This is episode one thirty four, I believe. Um, so again, this is my second week on NWA Power. So I don't know. I don't know shit about NWA Power. I'm just getting. I'm just getting here and starting to see faces. So it'll probably be like a month or two before I like start to know everybody. Uh, but this is like the third Thanksgiving special, and I know Aaron Stevens. If you don't know who Aaron Stevens is, he used to be a wrestler in WWE. He was Damian Sandow. And uh, I absolutely love this guy. Everything he does is great, and he's hilarious and awesome. 
Uh, so he goes up against CJ, who uh, is like a Brazilian female wrestler, and they have a turkey gobbler match. And uh, this is a, and they made a rules where it's no striking; it's only grapples, and they just I guess grappled and threw each other. Uh, this has such like an old school stipulation too, because whoever lost this match had a gobble like a turkey. Like I could see Jim Cornette or Brother Love or uh, Jimmy Hart having to do something like this back in like the eighties or seventies. Uh, this match was a lot of fun because you know Aaron Stevens is in it and everything he touches is fantastic. And of course he got beat by the woman and they threw a uh, they threw a turkey hat on him and made him gobble. And this was probably the highlight of the episode for me. Uh, next up, we had uh, Kylie Page or Big Mama. I don't know either of these women. And this was also apparently like Big Mama's debut. And for some reason, they had her lose. I heard that Billy Corrigan like, makes wrestlers lose when they first get to NWA just to see how they act. Which I, I, I do understand, but also I don't at the same time. Because when wrestlers debut, for the fans, it's like a new shiny toy. And we want to see that new shiny toy. But if you show us that new shiny toy sucks and can't win, we don't want to play with it anymore, you know? So, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I did enjoy their match. They had a great match. I'd like to see both, uh, more of Kylie Page and Big Mama in the future. Uh, loads of backstage stuff. A lot of the backstage people are horrible. They had they had a couple interviews that were god awful. Uh, they a lot of them were like struggling, you know. I'm a stand up comedian, so if NWA want to hire some people who can you know, who can talk and have some spice, call me up. My email is at coolkidswithasthma at gmail dot com. If you also have any of any wrestling questions, you can email me there. Okay, next up, they uh, introduced a brand new tag team with an the interview. They were called the Slime Balls. And the slime balls are uh, Sage Chance and Tommy Rance. I don't know if they're related to the Nasty Boys, but if not, I hope the Nasty Boys kind of sue them because they totally just stole the Nasty Boys gimmick. Uh, they are literally the Nasty Boys, but they changed the word nasty to slime. Instead of saying, take it down to Pity City, they're taking it down to Slime City. I am definitely intrigued of the future of the slime boys. And if there's any relation to them and the Nasty Boys in real life, I'd like to see where you know kind of where that's at. Uh, next up, the tag team match. Uh, I didn't catch anybody's names on this one. Uh, the one guy in this tag team match, he acts and looks just like stunning Steve Austin, which is kind of cool. He kind of caught my eye in this match. Uh, that's really all I took away from this match. It's a good match. I wish they'd do more entrances and like have their names pop up on screen. That'd be great, so I know who they are. And in the main event, it was a six-man tag with the Southern Six versus the New Spectaculars and a six-man tag match. I saw last week they actually recruited this new guy who they introduced here. He was a really like small white dude. Uh, he was, I guess he wasn't that good because he actually is the one who got pinned this week and lost the the new spectaculars the match. So yeah, I, these guys, but the guys in the main event, both teams, they were definitely one of the most uh, the most I guess charismatic of the ones I saw on NWA Power. I like to see more of these guys. Uh, so I'm definitely intrigued to watch more NWA so I can get to know more of these wrestlers. Um. Last year, me and my girlfriend, Tasia, actually went to, to, to a NWA pay-per-view. And that's the first time I watched anything NWA. Uh, we went to a pay-per-view. It was, it was the Always Ready. It was based on uh, Matt Cardona. And uh, it sucks because Matt Cardona got injured. Because I, I used to be his big Zack Ryder fan. Zack Ryder got injured right for the thing. And he didn't really get to wrestle. But he did relinquish his title. Where um, uh, I think Matt Murdock... Trevor Murdoch, I think his name's Trevor Murdoch. Trevor Matt Murdoch won the NWA title. And uh, I think now the NWA champions EC3. Because you know, we went to that pay-per-view and then we didn't watch NWA again uh, since then until about two weeks ago when I started get back in, trying to get into it for the first time, really. All right, so that was NWA Power. Again, I didn't watch SmackDown because of Hulu. And let's go ahead and jump into Survivor Series. 
So to start out, we had the women's war game match, which was, in my opinion, the best match of the night. It was Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, Becky, and Becky Lynch. It was a four-on-four war games, and they went up against Oscar, Bailey, Io Sky, and Kyrie Sane. Um, they had this weird thing where, like, ruffles where you get to where you can go to w.com and vote on who got the advantage. And I went online and I voted. I voted for Bianca's team. A lot of people are like, why would they vote for the, why would the face get the advantage? Well, like, usually the heels get the advantage. So, you know what? It's kind of nice to see a change of pace so they can get over it. Uh, I did, I did vote and I did vote for Bianca's team. So, the match kind of went how I predicted. I know my buddy, he was texting me, he goes, why would damage control lose? I don't get it. it. Didn't make any sense. And to me, I think it made perfect sense. The whole point of the damage co- damage control storyline is they're slowly pushing Bailey out. And Bailey's the one who got pinned, even though she stopped a lot of pinfalls and uh, she kind of took a lot of finishers for people, pushing people out the way. She was the MVP of the match. Uh, but I still think they're going to push her out, and I think they're going to turn Bailey face, which I think would be awesome. Um, so that was the whole point of the match. Also, another reason I think the good girls won is that, you know, Becky and Charlotte hasn't done a lot recently. They they they've, uh, haven't had a good year, either one of them. And I think having a War Games win under their belt helps them out a lot. Also, another reason is because Triple H loves history. Triple H loves uh, War Games. And who was a big person in War Games? The Nature Boy, Ric Flair. He wants to get a Flair, another Flair in there and get into the winning history books of war games I think that's another reason they went over is so you can say Flair, uh, another Flair won war games alright next up we had Miz versus Gunther um, to me in my opinion uh, you know, I've, it would have been cool to see Miz win and tie Chris Jericho for the ninth Intercontinental Championship most title wins uh, but I don't think that was the storyline. Uh, I was explaining to somebody, I was like, I think Miz knows he's going to lose. Like, I th- in, you know, obviously they know who's going to win or lose. It's predetermined. But, like, it, as his character, I think his character knew he wasn't going to walk out Intercontinental Championship. But I don't think that was his goal. I think Miz's goal at this pay per view wasn't to win the title, but to win Gunther's respect. And I think he might have done it. Gunther respects him a lot now. He even says, you know, yes, Miz belongs in the ring, but just not with the ring general. Or, I didn't say as good he's, he, as he does, but, you know, that was the, I think that was the storyline here. It wasn't a story for the title, but story for respect. Next up was Santos Escobar versus Dragon Lee. This match wasn't as good as I thought it'd be. Dragon Lee's been putting out some bangers with Cedric Alexander. So I was expecting a little bit more, but it was fine match. Santos went over, which he should have. You know, nothing to say here. Same with his next match, Rhea versus Zoe Stark. You know, we all knew Rhea was going to win. Short and easy match. You know, um, just didn't, nothing, nothing stuck out for me here. Before I get to the war games, I also want to bring up they did have a Ruffles commercial where they it was like they had the Piper Nevin and Chelsea Green and, and uh, Alpha Academy eating Ruffles chips and Pretty Deadly comes out and they kind of argue and do heel shit and they spill chips everywhere and Our Truth comes back, which is really kind of cool. I love seeing Our Truth. Uh, Our Truth is hilarious. And it ends with Akira Dozawa doing his little dance from the TikTok thing. It's kind of getting old already. I kind of wish they'd stop it. But, I mean, he's getting on t- he's getting TV time, which is great, because I love Akira Tozawa. But it's getting old already. It's time for the men's war game match. We have Team, I guess, Cody versus Team Judgment Day. 
Randy hasn't shown up yet. They've been teasing all night. He's not there. So they only come out with the four faces and then the five heels come out. This match wasn't as good as the women's war game match, but the story, the story kind of drove this one. Uh, finally, that we get to all the, where everybody's in the ring. It's time for Randy to come out. The alarm goes off, and no Randy Orton. And then Rhea comes out, and she's gonna. Uh, she comes out with. Uh, she comes out with Damian Priest's Money in the Bank briefcase. They're going to cash in because they just do set through a table. And then Randy Orton comes back like Piccolo saving the day. He comes out. And he's looking ripped as shit. He looks like a monster ready to whoop some ass. And he does. Uh, nothing happens with him and Jey Uso. They've been kind of hitting uh, at Jey Uso being nervous because it was. In the storyline, the Usos were the ones who wrote Randy Orton off TV. Uh, so we'll see how that plays off on Raw. I'm very excited to see that. I kind of want to call out from work just so I can watch this motherfucker. But I'll watch it when I get home. Anyway, uh, so Brandy Orton don't mess with Jey Uso. They kind of make a truce for tonight. Um, he whoops everybody's ass. They do this really cool uh, RKO where they have Sammy and uh, fuck, I can't. It might have been Cody who were holding JD McDonough on top of the steel cage. They threw him off where Randy got the RKO him. And then, um, and it looks like they're going to have JD McDonough get pinned, but then they turn around and they kind of, uh, Cody hits Priest with a uh, crossroads for the pin. I think they did that because I think they're going to turn on Damian Priest very soon and kick him out of Judgment Day. So the Team Cody wins, and like the, the Flair thing, you know how I said Triple H wants a Flair to win the War Games? I think same thing with the Rhodes. He wants a Rhodes family member to win War Games because it was Dusty Rhodes who created War Games. So he's getting that into the books. And a lot of people, I think, kind of don't see that. They just look at the the small picture instead of the big picture here. <clears throat> and then the story that everybody's talking about after War Games goes off, CM Punk comes out. And I, I, I had high hopes he'd come. A lot of people were like, oh, I didn't see it coming. A lot of people are saying, oh, I told you so, I told you so. I, I was in the middle. I thought, you know, if CM Punk's coming back, it would have to be today. It, or it had to be at War Games. Chicago. It wouldn't make sense to do it unless you saved it for the Rumble. So I was kind of, kind of glad they did it here. Uh, CM Punk came out, and um, I actually got to argue with a guy on Instagram today because I saw a video of a guy freaking out. He is so happy. And it's a video of him watching War Games, and he's freaking out, screaming because CM Punk comes out. And some guy was like making fun of him on Instagram, saying, "Why would you cheer for this guy? He's a cancer." I'm like, "Dude, just let him enjoy it." This guy's clearly a big CM Punk fan. Let him enjoy it. And people, like my best uh, friends, like meh. I was like, "What? Why don't people like CM Punk anymore? Why are people hating on CM Punk?" People are like, "Well, he's a cancer in the back to the locker room. He does this in the locker room." Do, do you work with... Have you worked with CM Punk? Odds are you haven't. Odds are anybody listening to this has not worked with CM Punk. So why, do, why does that affect your opinion on CM Punk? At one point, we all loved CM Punk. I still do. I don't have a beef with the guy. I never worked with him. So stop hating on CM Punk unless you worked with him. If you were... If, if you this is a Jungle Boy listening to him, to, to me right now, okay, you can hate on CM Punk. If you, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, anybody else, CM Punk pissed off, fine. You you can hate on him. But unless you worked with the guy or, like, you know, he's wronged you in the past, base your opinion on what you see on TV. Like, like Thea, Thea Hill. I'm not a big fan of her. I, just from what I see on TV, I don't judge her off the TV. I'm sure she's a great woman off TV. Judge CM Punk that way. And from what I see on Punk on TV, he has great matches. Phenomenal matches. Promos are just as good, too. He's the whole package. So, say, you know, I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited for Punk. 
So I hope he stays. I hope he stays ten years, twenty years. Fuck y'all. <laughs> no, I'm excited for Punk for real though. Uh, I have high hopes for him. Uh, I think him and Seth Rollins are obviously are going to have a feud at main, for Mania. They kind of like show is all over it's, uh, the internet of Seth Rollins having to be held back, cussing out Punk. I believe that is staged. Um, Seth Rollins is a professional. He wouldn't do that shit. So, you know, uh, I'm excited to see it. I honestly really wish I could call out work tonight to watch it. Uh, so it's been a big week in wrestling. I'm going to come back and uh, want to do more episodes. Fantasy. I uh, also have the other part of the show, which I was not going to do this week, but what, um, where I'm going to start booking a fantasy universe. It is, we're going to do Raw and SmackDown, and both brands get 60 guys a piece. Uh, and it could be anybody that's been in WWE, dead or alive, in their prime. And how, if they were all together, how it would go, how I'm going to book it. I'm trying to book it as, like, best of my ability. And I don't know. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys check it out. It's going to be in the future. That's actually, it's, going to, it's called Fantasy Universe Wrestling. That's the name of the show as well. Also, we'll have more reviews. we got more wrestling coming up. I'm definitely going to get to watch SmackDown this week. So excited about that. I'm going to keep up watching NWA, Raw, NXT. And uh, I know a lot of people, like, why do you watch NWA but you don't watch AEW? Well, I don't have the $60 Hulu one where you can watch AEW because I only stream. But uh, if I do get that, I will start reviewing AEW as well. I wouldn't mind also adding in uh, Reality of Wrestling, Booker T's promotion, and... uh, Add in TNA too, if possible. But you know, right now we're just gonna stick with Raw, NXT, NWA, and SmackDown. And uh, really excited about that. Real quick before I go, I'm gonna try to do this every week that I review stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do MVP of the week and best match of the week. Uh, for me, best match of the week, hands down, goes to the women's war game match. Uh, that one was, I don't know, I had, that match was awesome, a lot of fun. <clears throat> MVP of the week will be a little more harder to choose. Uh, no one really won a title this week. I think, I want to give it to Randy Orton. I felt bad for Randy Orton. His return was overshadowed by punks. But when Randy Orton came back, he is like probably the best physically he's looked. Probably ever. Dude, dude looks more ripped than he ever, ever has. So, uh, he came back. He looked like a million bucks. I mean, he, he was moving great. Uh, I'm happy he's back. I'm happy he didn't have to retire. So, MVP of the week. First time ever. Uh, this is November 2003. First time ever goes to Randy Orton. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. Uh, please check out future episodes. Uh, I get, you can email me any questions, wrestling questions, at coolkidswithasthma at gmail.com. I am stand-up comedian Sean Deals. Bye-bye.